this time the Bills and the Dolphins are uh, going through some training camp reps. I'm going to let Jim Kelly and Dan Marino throw some passes, but we won't be using passing sticks today. I'm going to use the uh, uh, optional alternative passing method that uses a 20-sided dice. And, of course, uh, that allows us to employ a lot of the different modifiers in supplemental EFHL rules to the uh, uh, difficulty or ease of the pass. So uh, let's just jump into this. Uh, the uh, obvious pass scenario here, the, the Bills are in the uh, empty backfield, and uh, the Dolphins have, are, have a, a dime formation rolling here. Um, I'm going to keep... Uh, uh, the uh, nickelback and the uh, dimeback stationary. Jim Kelly is going to stay stationary in shotgun right now as well. Here is the snap. Shotgun snap check. Roll to seven, that's fine. Now we'll do all the pivots. Kelly's standing in the pocket. Here's the read. Okay. Excellent blocking by number 55, Jim Hazlitt. He's holding back two dolphins right now, but Jim Kelly is under defensive pressure, so that will add uh, a plus one penalty to the uh, target number. Now remember, this doesn't work like passing sticks. There's not another bump of the board to see if the pass is complete. Now it's all about the dice roll. Um, with this method, you don't have to worry so much about the position of defenders, except if they're too close, uh, there's a chance for an interception. Um, it's currently a one vertical base length distance in the rule book. Um, if you would rather use a two vertical base length distance for perhaps more realism, that's fine with me. Um, that makes throwing passes just as risky as doing so with passing sticks with that method. But what we can do here now that the board is paused is we can sit here and we can actually throw a pass to every receiver to, to look at all the different scenarios. And um, so let's do that now. So who have we got open here? Uh, we've got... Uh, is that number 99 or 89? Yeah, it's 89, Steve Tasker, and it's probably the best pass here. But then both uh, the uh, the running backs here, uh, 34 and 26, that's uh, Thurman Thomas and George Sames. They're well covered within one, one vertical base length distance by a defender, which means on a roll of 1, 2, or 3 on our 20-sided dice, that is an interception. And here you can see the real strong benefit of a dime package right there. All those defenders uh, just right there taking two uh, receivers out of this play. Now over here we have the tight end and uh, another of the uh, defensive backs on this play. That's Elbert Dominion versus Zach Thomas. Uh, that's uh, maybe the closest, uh, the least amount of distance to cover. Might be the easiest pass right there. But again on a roll of one, two, or three. Um, it's going to be an inter interception by Zach Thomas. And, of course, there's going to be a penalty on this uh, dice roll because uh, uh, the quarterback is under defensive pressure. And finally, over here, we've got Andre Reed versus Paul Warfield. Um, that looks to me like it's uh, within one vertical base length distance between those two. So, again, uh, there's a chance for an, uh, an interception. Notwithstanding, let me check something. There are also the linemen here standing with a linear path between the quarterback and the intended receiver to consider. Uh, in both these passes over here, you've got a, a linebacker over here uh, that could intercept this pass if it's a one, two, or three. Or uh, number 66 there on the Dolphins could intercept that pass. Um, I'm not sure I would allow 99 to intercept the pass. He's so close. To Jim Kelly there for a, a, any of the passes over here. Uh, possibly he could knock it down. He could bat it down. We could uh, consider that as well. Now I'm not sure this is explicitly stated in the rule book, but we measure the distance of the pass from the line of scrimmage to the, uh, you can do the helmet or the front of the base of the intended receiver, whichever you think is more fair and, and balanced. I'm going to do uh, the front of base. So the distance from the line of scrimmage to this intended receiver would be 14 yards, okay? But that's we haven't accounted for the, the zone penalties yet. Um, let's see. The distance to the wide receiver on this side, uh, considerably less. Uh, we'll, we'll rule that as 11 yards pass. Now, 
the distance to the tight end. 10, 15. I'll rule that as a 19-yard pass. And these guys, I probably wouldn't even consider throwing to because even if they catch the ball, but they're not going anywhere. It would be a first down if he caught it. And, and in fact, it would be a first down if either one of them caught it. This guy has room to run. Um, this guy has a little room to run. Uh, tight end's probably going to be tackled immediately. And of course, you still have Dan Marino in the middle of the field here, uh, ready to uh, pounce on whoever catches his ball. The smartest pass will be this 14-yard uh, pass to number 89, Steve Tasker. Now, if we look on the chart here, uh, an 11 to 15-yard pass, which is what that would fall under, would be a target number of four, row four or higher on the 20-sided dice. However, uh, first of all, Jim Kelly's under defensive pressure, so that adds a plus one. So now he would need to reel a five or higher to complete this pass. But then we've got the zones to deal with, and each zone uh, accounts for uh, another plus two to the, uh, uh, to the um, difficulty of this. So let me just walk over here and show you. Remember, there are five different zones, horizontal zones, all the way down the field using this method. Between the sideline and the numerals, between the numerals and these hashes, between the hashes, between these hashes and these numerals, and between the numerals and the sideline. So Kelly is standing in this zone. The intended receiver is in this zone, which is one, two zones over, which means you would add an additional plus four penalty to this dice roll, which, if I'm not mistaken, that means we need to roll a nine or higher for this to be a completion. So again, um, 11 to 15 yards is a target number of four. Defensive pressure adds one. Target number is now five. The difference of zones, each zone is plus two. So now we need to roll a nine or higher in order to uh, complete the pass to Tasker here. So here we go. Here's the dice we'll be using. And I roll... A 14. It is a completion. Had I rolled an 8 or lower, it would have been incomplete. So let's just stick a pin in that. The the, uh, the pass to Tasker here is a completion. We'll go through a few more scenarios here. Let's, uh, let's uh, attempt a pass to Andre Reed down there. And we said he was 5, 10, 11 yards, which would still be a target number of 4. However... Uh, Jim Kelly is under defensive pressure. That would make it a target number of five. And we have a disparity of zones again. Plus two, plus two. So once again, it's going to be a target number of nine. Have to roll nine or higher in order for this pass to be complete. On a roll of one, two, or three, which would be a failure anyway, uh, it's intercepted by the uh, cornerback following him there. Okay? So we roll a one. How about that? So, uh... In this case, bad luck of the roll of the dice, intercepted. At which point we would, uh, you know, go off rails and uh, all unblocked players pivot and see if he can advance it back to the field. In this case, he'd be tackled immediately. All right, now let's try to throw the pass there to the tight end. Um, to Binion. So he, let's see. So we're, we're going to put him 19 yards away from the uh, line of scrimmage. Uh, which would make this natively a target number of five, plus the defensive pressure, target number of six. and But there's only one difference in zones. So that makes it a target number of eight. Okay? Uh, it's, it's an easier pass because he's closer to midfield than either of the uh, wide receivers. So Kelly doesn't have to throw as far. Okay? So if we roll an eight or higher, it's a completed pass, and we proceed as normal. However, on a roll of one, two, or three, uh, the uh, oh, um, middle linebacker, Zach Thomas, will intercept. So we have rolled. It fell on the ground. Unbelievable. This little dice tray here, and it still bounced out of there and hit the ground. But it was a 19. That is a completed pass. By the way, a 20 is always, uh, if you roll a 20 on this, don't, regardless of the modifiers, it's still a completion. Okay. Even if somehow the the negative modifiers made it to where you would have to roll a 21 or higher, which would be impossible on a 20-sided dice. If you roll a natural 20, it is a completion. So, uh, so far, uh, we've got one interception and two completions. Uh, we could do the same thing here, but, you know, those are pretty comparable 
yeah, I, let's just not even throw it at them. I, they can't go anywhere anyway. So, um, so let's get back into the real world as such. This was the completion, and now at this point, uh, the intended receiver, Steve Cat, Steve Tasker, can do his his little pivot after the completion. He's not going to pivot much. In fact, I decided really not to pivot him at all because this base does drift to the right. I don't want him going out of bounds immediately. So now, defensive bump of the board. Okay. And now all unblocked pivots, except for the ball carrier, who has achieved a first down. This looks to be an easy tackle, but a first down will have been achieved. So here we go. Oh! Oh! Oh, my! Oh, my! A, a surprise development here. That is a fumble, but did he go out of bounds before... Uh, he was tackled from behind and, and the ball stripped. Well, this is why the ability checks exist, because I couldn't tell you that. Okay, so we'll use uh, wide... Uh, oh, no, 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 no. That's a Bills defender. Or that's a Bills player. He knocked him out of bounds. That is not a fumble. All right, all right, all right. Tasker out of bounds. I'm going to put him down at the 40 because he got pushed out of bounds a little more. That's, you know, a huge pickup. The, the Dolphins really blew it there on their uh, coverage. He just, he just outran the uh, Dolphins' uh, tacklers. And uh, so there you go. Um, well, either the batteries are dying in this switch again, or, you know, I've got some really slow bases on the Dolphins and the Bills here. Uh, I, hope it's not, I hope that's not the case. Um, but as you can see, he, uh, he got pushed out of bounds by his own player, and that's, you know, welcome to electric football, folks. Um, that's, it doesn't matter how good or poor your bases are. That's still going to happen. All right, this time I want Marino uh, to do a similar scenario. Stand by while I set up a, another play here. And while I'm separating these guys for the huddle here, let me just say that I know there's a lot of folks out there that uh, uh, would much prefer using passing sticks or an actual uh, uh, passing action figure quarterback. And I understand that. Uh, this is just a, another optional method that... It's pretty balanced, folks. It really holds up. It ties in real well with the uh, with the real set I've I've looked up. And um, there we go. There's the huddle. If you since I've always paused the video during this stage. At this point now, I will uh, uh, set up the formations. But certainly, if you don't have any passing sticks or, or don't want to fool with them, and if you cannot hit anything with a triple threat quarterback or uh, your passing quarterback action figure of choice and you're getting really frustrated, try this dice method. To me, it's no more or less frustrating uh, than those other two methods. And you only need one piece of equipment rather than a suite of passing sticks or uh, a 3D printed uh, action figure quarterback on a spring or, or tension or whatever. You do lose out on a little realism from that extra bump of the board to see whether the uh, uh, intended receiver actually catches the pass. So that, we forego that because you know it's it's more similar to when you use a triple threat quarterback and then a you know time stops and the ball teleports to the intended receiver. It's that sort of a thing. So it's a compromise there, but it's not it it's not for everybody. Uh, I can see that totally, and I'm probably not even going to use it in my EFHL gameplay, but it's there if you need it, folks. All right, let me set up a formation and let uh, Dan Marino throw some long bombs here. All right, the Dolphins, are once again, an empty backfield, but this time uh, uh, we've got uh, four wide receivers on the field rather than two tight ends and three wide receivers. I do want to put this slot receiver out past the numerals, though. It is, there's seven men on the line there. And now uh, the Bills are in prevent here. Um, uh, safety's back really deep. Middle linebackers, back, well, we'll call those defensive backs uh, really deep. But the uh, outside linebackers, we'll call them defensive backs as well for this play. They're, they're going to advance forward during the read uh, to, uh, for man coverage on some of these uh, slot receivers. All right. And we'll, uh, I'm, I'm going to let Marino just sit there in the pocket. We may scramble uh, once the read is over. But all right, here we go with the snap. Tight end is going to attempt a slant route here. All right, this is going to be a, a full read here, I think. Let's see what happens. All right. Marino is going to scramble towards this sideline. Um, DeBinion is actually going to... 
head this way in case Marino decides to run with the ball. He's not going to. But otherwise, we've got, you know, nice coverage here. Now, uh, uh, Jim Kelly is having to cover both these receivers, but you've still got uh, a safety back or a, you know, maybe a, a, a dollar or a, a seventh defensive back uh, ready to uh, uh, deal with this. He's safe. He's a stationary as well. Um, but, and, you know, good coverage down there as well. Uh, the pocket is collapsing, which is the reason I am scrambling. So let's uh, just go ahead and do the scramble, which should be uh, less time. We should bump the board for less time, about half the time as we did for the uh, read. need to start policing myself on that as well. Here we go, the scramble. Okay, Dabinion is, is poised to make a play on, on Marino if he should happen to uh, run with the ball, which... Ah, let me study this a minute, but it looks like that would be the, the, the best thing to do. Now, this time I'm going to have to physically uh, measure some of the distances between and, uh, possible intended receivers and their uh, assigned defender to see whether uh, they fall within the interception range. Uh, no, we're good here. We're good here. There's uh, He would not have that penalty on his, uh, his dice roll. So in that case... Only a roll of one or two would result in an interception. Uh, let's see. We'll have to uh, eyeball this. Now there we would have a possible interception there. Uh, there would be a possible interception, but not here. I, whoops. I, yikes. It's hard to believe that a, a piece of felt could move an electric football player that far. But, uh, I mean, I mean that's... That's going to be a clean uh, a catch from that distance. And, uh, ooh, but he is technically one zone over because uh, he's, he's, he's on this side of the numerals and Marino is on this side of the numerals. So, uh, you know, we'll do this again. We'll just uh, make several different pass attempts here and uh, try to uh, add all the modifiers. Now, Marino is under no defensive pressure the way Jim Kelly was. There's no defenders anywhere near him except Dabinion, who's, has a long way to go to, to get him under defensive pressure. So, uh, start here with number 12. And, uh, again, folks, I don't have their their names memorized yet. That's Bob Greasy. Uh, so, uh, let's calculate the distance. It's a long bomb, a long bomb pass here. I'm going to rule that a 36-yard pass which would normally be a roll of 12 or higher, but Greasy is technically in a different zone, and you have to, to, to I mean, you can't just look at it and say, well, it doesn't matter, folks. You've got to, you know, st you know keep stick to these zones if you're going to make this, make this work. So we will add two to that, and so we need to roll a 14 or higher. See, there's where the difficulty comes in. That's a much more difficult pass than the, the, the passes that Jim Kelly was going to throw. So let's see what happens. Now there could be, you know, the weather conditions could make this more difficult. Uh, Dan Marino could have a player rating of 50 or higher, which he almost certainly will by the end of preseason. Uh, if he completes his pass, that'll be one additional player rating point right there. Um, but uh, we'll, for now, we'll, 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 we won't put any more modifiers on this. So we're looking for a 14 or higher in order to complete this pass. And I rolled an 11, so it's an incomplete pass. So the difficulty is padded in there, okay? Let's uh, try a pass there to the tight end, Zach Thomas. Now, he is in the same zone, but let's just calculate it here. And I'm, I, fortunately, the ball is on the 25, so it won't be as hard to calculate. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, a 41-yard pass for Zach Thomas, which will be a target number of 14. No additional penalties or bonuses on that. So let's see how we do there. Rolled an eight, incomplete pass, and uh, since it wasn't a one or a two or a three, um, in that case, no interception. Okay, let's try to complete a pass to uh, number 42, Paul Warfield, who is right here. Now, uh, folks, what I'm doing right now is not how you do this. I'm just showing you all the different passes Marino can make for demonstration here. You get one shot at a pass per play, obviously. So... Let's calculate the distance. He is one zone away from Marino. So, let's see. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26 yards. Um, 
So the difficulty, that would be in target number of eight or higher. But because he's one zone away, we add two, a plus two penalty to it to make a target number of ten. Okay? Much easier path than both these because he's a little closer. And these penalties for these horizontal zones, of course, account for the fact that um, when you throw a pass from the sideline towards midfield, it's a greater distance than if you're throwing it head on. All right. So an eight or higher, uh, and let's say, you know what? Let's just go ahead and start adding the additional modifiers here because a defender is within one vertical base length distance from the intended receiver. Let's add a plus one to the difficulty, meaning we need to roll a nine or higher. When there's a defender near the intended receiver, it's going to be more difficult to complete the pass. That's what that's there for. So let's see what we get. I rolled a nine, so it's a completed pass. Okay, so Warfield uh, may be our guy here. Um, and now we've got one more receiver down here. Uh, wait a minute, look here. Oh my God. One of my intended receivers got held by the uh, linebacker. So that's a penalty, folks. So <laughs> whatever happens here uh, negates that. Um, yeah. One of my slot receivers, his, his arm is locked with the uh, outside linebacker. I did try to avoid that, but it happened anyway. But we've caught it, so we've got to we got to throw a flag on that. Okay, but notwithstanding, uh, number eighty-three down here, wide open, but and he's not under pressure from uh, his uh, intended or his assigned defender. Um, and uh, apologies for the lull here. This is why I do uh, pause the, the video. 83 is Mark Clayton, so 16, we'll call this an 18-yard pass. However, he is three zones away from Marino. So 18-yard natively would have a target number of five, but since he's that many zones over, three zones over, that's an additional plus six. So... Now the target number is 11 or higher. Um, he's not that far downfield, but he's all the way across the field from Marino, so it's going to be a more difficult pass. Okay? And he's not under pressure. Marino's not under pressure. So an 11 or higher, and this is a completed pass. Ooh, he rolled a 6. That's incomplete. So out of all these scenarios, only Warfield caught the pass. So that's who we'll roll with here, and we'll uh, play out the scenario. Um, he's not going to get a lot of yardage on this. I don't think. His biggest danger right now, in my opinion, is being tackled from behind and have the ball stripped. So, defensive bump of the board. All right, I'll do all the unblocked pivots. Now, one thing you might notice here is that the angle of number 70's block is not in such a way as to try to stop him. I don't want him to accidentally tackling Warfield. Uh, so I'm keeping him out of the way. I don't think this is going to develop into a, a run. It is a first down. A uh, nice pass by Marino, actually, but I don't see this uh, uh, developing very far, so uh, I'm going to look at this as best as I can. This is a, a strange angle for me to see the action, so here we go. Um, oh, he tackled from behind, folks. That's a fumble. Let's play it out. Let's play this scenario out. Uh, of course, he. Uh, this was not a tackle from the front, but the lineman stripped the ball from behind. So here we go. Okay, that's going to be a Dolphins recovery by uh, this guy. So now uh, all unblocked players pivot. He's going to recover, and he might have a play on this. Uh, none of these guys can go. Um, ooh, this is a, a, a surprise development here. This might play out in uh, Miami's favor. So here's the first recovery opportunity. And of course it's recovered. Now all unblocked players pivot. Now, this choice may drive you insane, but rather than trying to go up the middle there, the uh, the recoverer of the fumble is going to try to come around. And I happen to know his base curl. I'm going to see if we can't get him around. Um, he had been tackled immediately there at the uh, 45, thereabouts, maybe even sooner. Uh, this might result in more yardage, or it might not. Uh, this is a, a calculated risk here. So uh, Buffalo is, at this point, in trouble because... Uh, this is a huge gain, and uh, 
whoever recovered that ball is going to get a player rating point. So here we go. Okay, I got him to the 31-yard line before he went out of bounds. And that was a better scenario than what would have happened headed the other way. He'd have been down at the 35, so I picked up about four additional yards by doing that. Uh, big, big gain there. Um, Marino gets a play, or yeah, Dan Marino gets a player rating point. Uh, let's see. Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember exactly how far that pass was. Uh, I'll have to watch the playback to see whether uh, the intended receiver got the player rating point. However, he did fumble the ball, so that might negate that. Um, or he was stripped, we'll say. I might give this gentleman, uh, this is number 78 on the Dolphins, I might give him a player rating point for recovering the fumble and making a play out of it, extending the, the yardage. Let's see who that is. It's one of the uh, linebackers on defense. I will never memorize these names, folks. Uh, uh, I think that's a Richmond Webb. Uh, so, uh, let's see. Yeah, number 78. So I might give him a player rating point for that hustle, uh, recovering that ball and uh, advancing it downfield. Well, that was a fun scenario, wasn't it? But again, folks, you, you don't with this method, you don't sit there and try to complete a pass to all your eligible receivers. You get one shot at it. I just wanted to, to get some practice in doing this. Very demonstrable what we did here today. Um, you know, having done this, this is kind of fun. But I want to stick with passing sticks, if only because uh, doing this... It's just allows the viewer, you know, prior to the pass, it just really allows the viewer to see exactly where the ball is headed or where the ball is going to be thrown and where the intended receiver is headed. And if I can only remember to pick up the <laughs> passing stick and get it out of the way uh, before the, uh, the play starts, just for giggles here. Nice completion there by number 56, a lineman on the Bills. Uh, perhaps that was an interception rather than, <laughs> than a penalty. Um... There was a penalty against the Bills on that play. You know, there was holding there by the uh, linebacker, but uh, obviously Miami's declining that penalty, and the, it would be first down there at the 31-yard uh, line where I uh, before I picked him up. So nice play, nice nice demonstration there. Um, yes, luck is involved, you know, with this, but all those modifiers improve the odds in your favor if you don't have a lot of penalties on that um, uh, dice roll, in which case it would improve the odds in the defense's favor. Uh, but you know what? Passing sticks are also luck. Um, especially if you're playing on a terrible game board and if your bases don't run true. Now, I've eliminated some of that uh, guesswork from the bases. Some of it, we'll say, uh, by using my own homemade bases. But, you know, the, the when you're playing on an entry-level game board or a bad game board, then uh, there is some luck involved when using passing sticks. Otherwise, uh, there's an extreme amount of luck involved when using the uh, passing action figures, particularly the triple threat quarterback. Um, if you're skilled enough at that, then and you can you know rely on that consistently. Just do what you want to do, folks. That's why you that's why you're given so many choices with these. Now you have three choices: you have uh, passing sticks, you have the action figures, and you have this this nifty little dice rolling method, which I am definitely going to use in another board game I'm developing with using uh, little electric football figurines. Uh, that's how you will pass in that game. It's going to be a lot of dice rolls to try to determine different stuff in that game. It's sort of a, a tactical uh, movement of the figure. You know, there's a lot of football board games, uh, and even some of them that employ action figures, but, you know, in, in all cases, the action figures themselves are superfluous. You don't even need those to play the game, but I'm trying to develop a little... A board game uh, you can make yourself using your own electric football figures and play on your electric football game board if you want to, but uh, otherwise these, you know, felt football guys game board would work just as well to where there's no motor, there's no bases, it's just, you know, rolling the dice using some of the, the methods that I'm uh, employing in, currently in the supplemental EFHL rules. That's a long time down the road, folks. Uh, I have no idea when that's going to be. Uh, I, I at this moment... I am kind of having fun doing these training camps in electric football. So that's just, you know, uh, a sneak peek of something that will happen in the far future, probably. But there you go. Uh, alternative optional passing method. It holds up. The balance is there. There is difficulty the further you get downfield. 
there there are the opportunities for interceptions as you just saw even using this method there's still opportunities for turnovers uh, but fortunately the Dolphins uh, lucked out and was able to recover and, and advance the ball additionally good defense by the uh the uh, Dolphins receivers down there tying up all the uh, defensive backs so that he could swing around them and get a few more yards out of it. Okay. Well, I appreciate you watching this. I think, I think I'm going to do a little more. I'm going to do a few more snaps with these figures. They, they're, they're running slow on me, but that may just be the, the batteries in the switch, or it just may be the, the game board itself, or maybe there's something wrong with the bases. It's just so terribly difficult to determine that information when you're playing on a terrible game board. But I'm doing the best I can here. So uh, I think next time we'll look at the um, the Patriots and the Jets, and we'll start looking at some alternative formations and maybe some different plays to run that I can do without dial bases. Okay, thanks for watching. See you soon.